Hello and welcome to our short demo video on NetDevOps. NetDevOps, or Network DevOps, is using traditional DevOps tools like Ansible, Chef, and Puppet on network equipment like routers and switches. This short video will demonstrate how Ansible can hugely benefit provisioning, hot swapping the switch, and even performing reactive network changes. My name is Sean Cavanaugh. I'm a senior consultant here at Cumulus Networks. Previously, I've worked for Cisco Systems as both a network consulting engineer and QA engineer. I also have some federal experience working as a civilian in the U.S. Navy. I joined Cumulus Networks because it combined my passion for computer networking as well as let me use my background in automation. Our flagship product, Cumulus Linux, is uniquely positioned to lead NetDevOps because the interface is Linux. This allows tools like Ansible to just work as they do for servers. Also, when using the examples provided online, especially from awesome repositories like Ansible Galaxy, they just work. Is there an example playbook that configures NTP or Nagios? It will just work on Cumulus Linux. The objectives for this demo are showing the setup with Cumulus VX and Ravello, configuring and provisioning the network with Ansible playbooks, two different use cases, one from human error and one from hardware failures, and finally resources where you can also set up this demo. And then we'll do a brief recap. For this demo, we'll be using a spine leaf topology that is recommended in the data center. I will use four leaf switches, four spine switches, two Ubuntu hosts, and two edge devices, also sometimes referred to as CE or customer edge devices. All the network nodes will be run in Cumulus VX, short for virtual experience, and available on cumulusnetworks.com for free. For this particular demo, I am using a public cloud company called Revelo. Revelo allows me to stitch together Cumulus VX and the network shown. Let's go ahead and log into Revelo. Revelo will allow me to log in on revelosystems.com. In the top right corner, there's a login window. I'm going to log in with my username and password. I then can save lots of different applications as separate folders. I'm going to scroll down to the particular demo today, NetDevOps with Ansible. You can see that the topology on Revelo Systems website resembles the network diagram from the PowerPoint shown earlier. I'm going to go ahead and turn on all the VMs. I can click this check mark in the top left and then press start. This will actually push all the VMs out to Google Compute, stitch them together, and then allow me to log into an Ubuntu management workstation. Looking back at the diagram, I've now highlighted the out of band network in red. I have set up Revelo to give the Workbench VM a public address. This is where I will administer the network and run Ansible playbooks from. Each VX instance will be using its ETH0 interface for out-of-band management, just like a real physical switch. This means the playbook I've created for this demonstration could be directly applied to real hardware. This means tools like Revelo for public cloud or Vagrant for private cloud can allow me to test my Ansible playbook prior to using them on production gear. Cumulus VX then becomes a huge risk mitigation for deploying automation. I'm going to return to the Revelo web browser window. I'm going to click on the WBench VM down at the bottom, and in the summary tab, it's going to show me the public IP address. I'm just going to grab that public address. I'm going to SSH to it with the username Cumulus. I've already gone ahead and set up my SSH key, so I was able to log in without a password. I'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal output just to keep it clean. It auto logs you into the home directory, home slash Cumulus. Within this home directory, I set up a folder called NetDevOps, and within this NetDevOps folder, I set up various playbooks. The main playbook is called playbook.yaml.yml. This playbook simply sets up and provisions my network. To run a playbook, um, I simply use the ansible-playbook command, and then I type playbook.yaml. I grouped parts of the network into different groups. So there's a spine group, which configures the spine switches. There is a leaf group, which configures the leaf switches. And there's an edge group that configures the CE devices. I've already pre-provisioned the hosts, but you could add another group to provision the hosts as well. Obviously, Ansible works on Ubuntu, so there's nothing unique there. You can see it's already gone through the spine group. It's moved on to the leaf group. And finally, it's going to go ahead and configure the CE devices which is called the edge group. If 
you can see that Ansible uses various colors to indicate what it's skipping and what it's changing. At the end of the playbook, it's going to give us a summary of what has been changed within the network. So you can see here that various items have changed in all of the devices, all 10 devices um, minus the two hosts have been changed as indicated in orange. Now that I've run the Ansible playbook, I've quickly provisioned all 10 devices simultaneously. The playbook configured our IP addressing and Etsy network interfaces. It turned on the Quagga application under Etsy Quagga daemons. It configured OSPF unnumbered under Etsy Quagga Quagga.com and finally added a message of the day by editing Etsy MOTD. It did all of this in parallel and can scale to hundreds and hundreds of devices if needed. Provisioning is a very simple use case, but a very powerful one. In the past, network engineers would generate the config in Excel or a simple Python script, then literally cut and paste the configuration into a telnet window. This could consume loads of time and only allows a network engineer to configure one device at a time. Since Ansible is actually generating a configuration, it becomes a single source of truth. The term is often described as infrastructure as code. Let's go ahead and show a common situation. A network engineer began to troubleshoot something on his network. Rather than consulting with another person on his team, he went rogue and changed the configuration with little thought on how it could affect the rest of the network. Ansible can be configured to run in intervals and actually will notice configuration change, revert it to the master configuration, and alert to allow the network team to notice the change. Let's see this in action. I'll go ahead and actually log in to Spine4 now. I'm going to pretend that I'm a rogue network engineer and edit Etsy network interfaces without consulting anyone on my team. Let's just create a bridge. I have reloaded. it back and we'll run the playbook again. Make sure to add the YAML. What's nice about Ansible is it's not going to make changes on network nodes that are running the correct configuration. It'll actually do a diff. But you'll see that it orange highlights spine 4 because SE network interfaces has changed. It's only going to reload networking on Spine 4, meaning it's non-disruptive to network nodes within the fabric that don't have anything change. See that none of the leaves change, so it just skips those playbooks and runs quicker. Nothing on the edge changes, so it skips those as well. The green just means that everything's fine, I'm not applying any changes. You'll see in the recap, the only thing that changed was Spine 4, meaning that my infrastructure as code um, example worked, it only affected change and enforced policy upon the configuration where a rogue network engineer applied something incorrectly. Let's go ahead and do something more interesting. We will assume that there's a fan error in Spine 2, represented by the IP address 4.4.4.4. This information can be gathered a variety of ways. We could use a periodic Ansible script that gathers facts from SMON CTL, a tool on Cumulus Linux for monitoring hardware state, we could just use our syslog to a remote server that we were monitoring for hardware issues. We could also use a third-party application like Sensu or Nagios to gather this information as well. Regardless, we will assume that this, we have this information and we know the fan is bad or reporting a bad fan on Spine 2. This is where we can automatically kick off an Ansible playbook to react and take Spine 2 offline gracefully. Let's look at all the routes that leave one using the IP address 7.7.7.7 takes to get to leaf 4 using the IP address 10.10.10.10. Since we're using ECMP, equal cost multipath routing, we have four routes that can be taken, one through each spine switch. We want to remove all routes taken on spine 2. Let's go ahead and look at these routes. I'm going to log into leaf 1. I'm going to use the IP route show command on leaf 4, represented by 10.10.10.10. I should see all four spine switches in their respective IP addresses. And I do. I see four spine switches in there. Let's also go ahead and check leaf2. IP route show 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. 
And again, I see four routes, one through each spine switch. How can we automate taking spine two offline? Since in our topology, we're using OSPF for our routing protocol, we will write a playbook that increases the cost of OSPF on every interface for spine two. This will make sure that spine two is no longer considered an equal route compared to the other spine switches. Let's go ahead and set it to the max of 65535. Setting the max is not enough. We need an additional step. We need to actually check to make sure it was correctly brought out of routing. Cumulus Networks has open sourced a module called Prefix Check that we can run to check the route tables of any Linux device, including Cumulus Linux. It will check the routes to make sure 4.4.4.4, the IP address um, representing Spine 2, has been removed. Since we can run Ansible simultaneously, we can check all devices in the network at the same time. We saw how long it took for me just to check two devices, which is also prone to human error. Finally, we can set up an alert so the administrator is aware that not only did a problem occur, but the device has been brought out of the routing gracefully and proactively, rather than waiting until the bad band could affect the device. Instead of having your network administrator wake up sleepy and manually configure OSPF costs, he can check from his phone from bed. Ansible has integration with PagerDuty, Slack, email, and many other alerting systems. Playbook-fan is the playbook I'll be running next. I've separated the playbook-fan and the playbook-check just to make it easier for people to absorb through our GitHub page. I'm going to go ahead and run it. See that it's only running on Spine 2. You can see that it ran on all six interfaces, increasing the OSPF cost. Let's go ahead and run the check. This is going to simultaneously check for the next hop 4.4.4.4 from every leaf switch. Even more interesting is as soon as it finished, it sent me a report through my email. You can see I got an Ansible report with the date, the time and date. It says spine 4 with IP address 4.4.4.4 slash 32 is no longer being used by routing with a timestamp. Please hot swap this switch ASAP. Now we know that spine 2 has been removed from routing. Now an on-site tech can use a hot spare switch, plug it in, and reprovision. Do you want to learn networking but don't know where to start? Cumulus VX is 100% free. You can run it on your own laptop. Visit cumulusnetworks.com. We have this available for VMware, VirtualBox, KVM, and Vagrant. All the documentation is free and open as well, with links right on our website. Again, our flagship product, Cumulus Linux, is uniquely positioned to lead DevOps because the interface is Linux. This allows tools like Ansible to just work as they do for servers. Provisioning is a powerful use case, but there's many additional NetDevOps scenarios where NetDevOps begins to greatly add more value than traditional DevOps.